is breaking news from Channel 8 Eyewitness News. And good evening. We start tonight with the news that Senator Ted Kennedy has died. Kennedy lost his 15-month struggle with brain cancer. He was the second longest serving senator in American history. The senator was the youngest in a line of Kennedy brothers who shaped American history. Hari Srinivasan looks back at the life of Edward Kennedy. Born into the Kennedy political dynasty in 1932, he was known as Teddy. Edward Moore Kennedy was the youngest son of Joseph and Rose Kennedy. He followed in his father and brother's footsteps and devoted his life to politics. Along the way, he earned the respect of Democrats and even the Republicans who fought much of what he stood for. He is a fabulous United States Senator. When he's against you, it's tough. When he's with you, it is a great experience. <laughs> The brother of President John Kennedy came on the political scene in 1962 when he finished out JFK's Senate term. But Ted's quick ascent would soon be marred by tragedy. President Kennedy died at 1 p.m. Central Standard Time. The nation lost a president and Ted Kennedy lost his beloved brother Jack. Five years later, his brother Robert was gunned down by an assassin's bullet. The nation watched as Ted delivered an emotional eulogy. Simply as a good and decent man, who saw wrong and tried to right it, saw suffering and tried to heal it, saw war and tried to stop it. After Robert's death, it was up to Ted to carry on the Kennedy torch. He became the surrogate father to his brother's children, often gathering at the family compound in Hyannisport. Kennedy's aspirations for president were dashed in 1969 when he drove his car off a bridge on a small island called Chappaquiddick. Though a young woman named Mary Jo Kopechny died, Kennedy waited 10 hours before reporting the crash. This morning I entered a plea of guilty to the charge of leaving the scene of an accident. Doubt and suspicion about Chappaquiddick would haunt him the rest of his life. The years that followed brought much family heartbreak. A young son with bone cancer and the end of his 23-year marriage to Joan Kennedy, the cancer death of his sister-in-law Jackie Kennedy Onassis, and the loss of his nephew JFK Jr. in a plane crash. In 2008, Kennedy experienced his own hardship when he was diagnosed with a malignant brain tumor. He underwent successful surgery and returned to work in the Senate. It was a homecoming that was met with applause from his Senate colleagues, but his health problems lingered. He collapsed at an inaugural luncheon for President Obama, whose campaign he vigorously supported. Doctors said he had a seizure brought on by fatigue. He continued to work and was awarded an honorary knighthood from Britain and the highest U.S. civilian honor, the Medal of Freedom. The life of Senator Edward M. Kennedy has made a difference for us all. Until the end, Ted Kennedy fought to make positive changes on Capitol Hill, always proud to call himself the liberal senator from Massachusetts. Hari Srinivasan, CBS News. And in his final year of life, as mentioned, Kennedy worked hard to get President Obama elected. He also worked on health care reform. He was 77. Here locally, a woman died tonight in a small house fire in the northwest part of the valley. The fire is out, but investigators are now searching for clues to determine how it started. Channel 8 Eyewitness News is live. Aaron Drahorn is at the scene near US 95 and Ann Road with the very latest. Aaron. We are having some technical difficulties with Aaron's fire story, and we will get back to it as soon as we can. Well, the first day of school is supposed to be a memorable day, but for one Las Vegas family, it is now a day they uh, hope to forget. Their six-year-old son was left at the wrong bus stop. Eyewitness News is live investigating how this all happened and what the district has to say about it. Jonathan Martinez joins us live with the latest. Jonathan. Dave, we're at the intersection of Vegas and Buffalo, the bus stop where that child was supposed to be let off. And if we turn the camera or try to turn the camera and zoom into where he was let off, well, we couldn't because it was just that far away. While routine now to pick up his six-year-old son, Ken, from the bus stop, Greg Hitchcock says what happened on his first day of school was anything but routine. I couldn't sleep last night. I felt sick to my stomach the whole night. Hitchcock says he was waiting for his son at the stop when he got a call from the school district. We have him here at our school. 
well, where's your school? And he described where it was. It's about four and a half miles from here. Hitchcock says his son was dropped off several stops before he was supposed to. The worst possible nightmare of a parent came true when your son is left in the middle of nowhere. A good Samaritan found the boy wandering in the area and took him to a nearby school. The boy's father is now asking the district to do something about it. Examine what happened, why it happened, make changes to it. And so that it does not happen again. Yes, it's very concerning, but um, we haven't lost any. Uh, we have a lot of situations during the first few days. Doug Geller with the school district's transportation department says they are investigating, but admits the start of a new school year can be hectic. We do not have any control of the, the students getting on or off the buses. Meaning there could be even more kids getting lost in the shuffle. Whether it was the bus driver's fault in this case is still something the district is looking into. We'll determine whether there was any culpability or anything that he did or said that could have been uh, misled or that led to this happening. For now, this father understands how close he was to losing his son. It's such a fine line between my son is here and I can still play catch with him to he's gone and we'd probably never see him again. Hitchcock has yet to meet the man who found his son. He says besides knowing his name may be Eddie, he really doesn't know a whole lot about him, but he is obviously expressing his extreme gratitude for what he did. Reporting live, I'm Jonathan Martinez, Channel 8 Eyewitness News. Jonathan, the district's going to do this investigation. Did they say how long it would last, how thorough it would be? No timeline yet mentioned by the district. However, they do say obviously children's safety is their number one priority. So as you might imagine, they will be getting on this case uh, pretty fast, if you will. All Maybe. right, Jonathan. We've fixed our technical issues and are ready to get back to that fatal fire in the Northwest. Channel 8 Eyewitness News is live there. Aaron Drawhorn on the scene at 95 and Ann. Aaron. Paula, this fire was a very small fire. It only did about $5,000 in damage, but it has a big and unfortunate consequence involving the loss of life. Investigators are still here on the scene on Grand Palace Avenue, Las Vegas Fire and Rescue. The coroner just left and Metro Homicide on the scene. Now, that doesn't mean a murder took place here necessarily, but authorities want to make sure a crime was not committed, so detectives are brought in. It's routine procedure so they can rule out foul play. Here's what we've learned on the scene here tonight just after 7 p.m. Neighbors saw smoke coming out of this house. Firefighters found very, very, very thick smoke pouring out of a downstairs bedroom. Inside, they discovered a woman lying on the bed dead. Neighbors immediately raced to the rescue, but in a matter of minutes, the bedroom blaze proved to be a tragic killer. Um, when we were leaving our house, we were going up to the store to eat. And um, the next door neighbors, they, they there's like... Um, People banging on the door and then some were on the cell phones and they were trying to see if anybody was home and then as we got up to this street on Tanea, there was already two engines there. If it turns out to be a crime, uh, we want to make sure that all the evidence has been preserved. We've, we've had fires in the past uh, where people have committed crimes and homicide and they use fire to cover it up. At this early stage, investigators say they have not determined the cause, whether this is accidental or arson. There is no immediate indication a crime took place, but homicide detectives here will sift through the burned out room throughout the night looking for any critical clues. Many times in deadly blazes where the fire is mainly confined to a bedroom area like the case here tonight, a lot of times smoking a cigarette is to blame. However, at this point, officials say it's really too early to tell if a cigarette was the cause of this fire. By the way, no one else was home at the time of the blaze. We are live tonight in the Northwest. Aaron Drawhart, Channel 8 Eyewitness News. Aaron, we recently reported on another deadly house fire. Have there been more than usual? Actually, yes, Paula, this year has not been a good year for Clark County. Clark County hasn't seen fire fatalities like this, we're told, in several years. As of tonight, uh, with another fire-related death last week, the count stands for seven fire-related deaths. That's for the entire state of Nevada, and all seven of those fires took place this year right here in Clark County. So authorities are really looking at that, Paula.
All right. Thank you, Aaron. Well, people supporting a plan to reform health care are set to show their support with rallies and bus tours over the next week. Congress is expected to take up the controversial issue when it returns to work after Labor Day. The group organizing the events says it wants lawmakers to know that the majority want changes. Today, the president's opponent during the election talked to his supporters about health care reform. Senator John McCain says he wants reform so all Americans can get it. affordable insurance, but says a government option isn't the answer. He also told the audience that he believes the president's motives for change are earnest. I am convinced the president is absolutely sincere in his beliefs, but he is, wait a minute, wait a minute, he is sincere in his beliefs. We just, we just happen to disagree, and he is the president of the United States, and let's be respectful. Don't miss our special program, The Health Care Debate, a Critical Condition. We have asked the entire Nevada delegation to answer your tough questions on health care reform, and we want to hear from you. So send us your questions at lasvegasnow.com, keyword health care. Uh, by the way, that special will air Wednesday, September 2nd, 7 p.m., right here on Channel 8. Older models top the new list of the most stolen cars. Here in Southern Nevada, the top car for thieves is the 1992 Honda Accord, followed by the 95 Honda Civic, the 90 Toyota Camry. In fourth and fifth place, the 2005 Dodge Ram pickup and the 94 Nissan Sentra. The National Insurance Crime Bureau puts together the annual list. They say car thieves want older cars because the parts are more valuable. In fact, some parts stripped from older cars sell for twice the value value of the car as a whole. With that kind of incentive, Metro says everyone should keep an eye on their car. At one time, Las Vegas topped the list for the most stolen cars, but we've dropped to seventh. That's still too high. Metro warns it doesn't matter what type of neighborhood you live in, they get reports of stolen cars all across the valley. It is all over the place. There is no place that's immune from it. So everybody has to take their proper measures to protect their car. At one time, the strip accounted for about 10% of the total number of stolen cars in the valley. That's dropped dramatically. Earlier this year, the I-Team analyzed all of the car thefts along the strip. We found that New York, New York had the fewest thefts, only three in the past year, out of its 4,000-spot garage. Monte Carlo also had three thefts. Now car thefts on the strip account for only 5% of the total number of thefts in the valley. Federal prosecutors have dropped the charges against a Las Vegas man already sentenced to a minimum 140 years in prison for molesting two girls. The federal trial for Chester Stiles was supposed to start Monday. The prosecutors announced that they would be dropping the charges. Back in May, Stiles was sentenced for molesting two girls. He uh, videotaped his attack on one of them, a two-year-old girl, and because of that, he was facing federal child pornography charges. The U.S. Attorney for Nevada says if Stiles is ever released from prison, those charges will be waiting. A judge ordered the county commission to reconsider bids for a paving project on the Las Vegas Beltway. At issue is a contract to pave a section of the Beltway. A North Dakota-based construction company disputes the contract, claiming the job was unfairly awarded to a Las Vegas-based company. A temporary restraining order is now in place on the project until the lawsuit is worked out. The commission will consider the contract in September. Well, a spouse swap of a different kind in San Diego. A pair of couples who were able to help each other out in their hour of need. We have that rather remarkable story. And we've got a look at the celebrities who could do the most damage to your computer. And uh, we ended a little streak today. Before today, we had had three days in a row with temperatures in the 90s. It's uh, beautiful outside tonight. We're currently at 89 degrees out at the airport, but the heat is building. How hot it's going to get? We'll have that forecast coming up. You're watching Channel 8 Eyewitness News at 11 with Paula Francis and Dave Cavassier. The first local news in HD. The Clark County Shooting Park was dedicated today in the far northwest part of the valley, despite objections of neighbors. Yep, nearby residents have been battling this new park from day one, and today's event was filled with that tension. Hundreds of people gathered for the dedication. Most applauded the opening of the new park. They say that park will provide them with a safe place to shoot instead of firing off weapons anywhere in the desert. But nearby residents really don't want the park. They say there will be constant noise in their backyard. County Commissioner Tom Collins, though, showed little sympathy. Some guy lived here two years from somewhere back in the Midwest. Pack your 
go home. If I knew when we bought this house that that was gonna be going there, there's no way I would have spent all the money on this house. Well, the residents tried to stop the park from being built with a lawsuit about noise pollution, but it failed. The park is set to open in December. A pair of couples in San Diego are thanking their doctors and each other for a remarkable swap. Robin Bryan and Patrick Ford needed new kidneys, but their spouses, Paul Bryan and Patty Ford, weren't matches. But it ended up they were a match for each other, so they swapped spouses, so to speak. Paul donated to Patrick and Pat Patty donated to Robin. Now they're all recovering from surgery and enjoying a new connection. Somebody up there was watching out for us. Robin gave me a better quality of life. <laughs> Sorry, a better quality of life. It was meant to be. I mean, you know, I got that deja vu thing going. There's, you know, I've, I don't know if we've met, you know, in the hallway or what, but I just, there was a connection. I just felt like, you know, we knew him from somewhere. The couples are very similar. They live less than 25 miles from each other and are about the same age, and they all love to golf. Men facing prostate cancer have many decisions to make about treatments and their various side effects. Now a new study of 5,000 men shows that a hormone treatment might not be safe for older men who have heart disease. The hormone therapy helps shrink or control prostate tumors by suppressing testosterone levels. It's used with surgery and or radiation for advanced cases of prostate cancer. Internet criminals just might be rethinking their favorite scam. The number of phishing emails seems to have dropped lately. IBM says the volume of the emails that use a bank or financial institution logo to get your personal information has dropped. The emails look legitimate. People are often falling for that scam, but computer experts say it could be that computer users are getting a little smarter about phony websites, or it could be that criminals are working on new ways to get your personal information. An internet security company is out with its annual list of what search terms will get you in the most trouble, and this year, Jessica Beale is at the top. Caffey says that hackers, scammers, and spammers love to use the most frequently searched names as places to hide connections to their invasive programs. McAfee says Beale is at the top of the list. They say her name is most likely to lead to spyware or viruses being loaded onto your computer. Now, Beyonce, Jennifer Aniston, and Tom Brady apparently are also dangerous. California is putting on a garage sale as a way to raise money for that state's budget shortfall. The Great California Garage Sale takes place this weekend. On the block will be items confiscated by the California Highway Patrol and other agencies, along with items the state doesn't need anymore. Computers, furniture, chairs, um, you name it, uh, office supplies of all sorts, but also items that have been confiscated from the California Highway Patrol, bicycles, jewelry. The state hopes to make $1.2 million this weekend, most of it from the cars that are on sale. Well, that, that should fix their budget. Yeah, that's a drop <laughs> in the old bucket. True. All right, what do we got? All right, week? well, last week of August, it looks like the August will wrap up a bit on the hot note because it yeah. uh, looks like we're going to get temperatures up uh, maybe about five, six warm, uh, mm -hmm. five degrees warm should be so uh, get ready for the return of some heat here's a live look outside at the uh, palace station where today for the first time in about four days we made it up to triple digits we've been in the lower 90s over the weekend we all held that uh, cloud cover we had the monsoonal moisture and some rain today we made it up to 100 degrees and now this ridge of high pressures begin to build in and we're gonna get pretty toasty by about Thursday Friday and Saturday so outside right now at the airport we're currently at 89 degrees with very low humidity right now at 9% uh, East Carrier 91. You can see East Washington in the upper 80s as well as West Tropicana. Pioche, very cool at 65. Tonopah, you're in the lower 70s. Uh, Boulder City at 86. Overton, you're at 84. A little bit warmer in Lake Mead at 95 degrees. Prump, you're at 74 right now. So highs today with well, a typical high now is 100 degrees. And you can see uh, many of us were above that and a couple of us below that. In fact, Seven Hills topped out at 99 degrees. Mount Vista made it up to 103. You can see Pioche, you topped out at 90. Mesquite at 100 and Boulder City at 101. So the official high here was 100, and 100 degrees exactly. That's the typical high now. And we didn't pick up any rain today. Take a look at the numbers. We've had only two 100ths of an inch of rain in August. Normally this time of year, we'd have 1.28 inches, or shall I say 3.15, and we have 1.28. We're still in a major deficit so far for this year. So here's a look at the radar. Very dry. We have this nice, kind southwest wind that's ushering in the dry air. All that humidity we had over the weekend is now pushed off towards the east. 
And now we get ready for this nice big ridge of high pressure to build in. Take a look at Florida. For the second time in, in, second time in a couple of days, the launch of the space shuttle was actually canceled, not due to weather. Early this afternoon, or it was, uh, was actually uh, canceled because of a faulty valve. Now, about 24 hours ago, it was canceled because of weather, the showers, and the sun, thunderstorms. So they don't have any time for the next launch as of right now. So a uh, hot ending to August as the trough pushes off to the east. Here comes this big ridge of high pressure. It was warm today. We topped out at 100 degrees, but as the ridge really builds, all this hot air is going to slowly usher in, and that's why we're going to get up to temperatures up to about 5 or 6 degrees warmer than it should be. Areas around the U.S. for tomorrow, Seattle will be in the upper 70s, 75 for San Francisco, 107 for Phoenix, hot everywhere really, except for Chicago at 73, upper 80s for Atlanta, 91 for Miami, and cool up towards uh, Boston at 88 degrees. So we'll get down to 79 tonight, forecast for tomorrow at 102, and then there's a look at the seven-day forecast as we start to heat up. Look at Wednesday at 105 uh, by Friday and Saturday, maybe a couple of heat warnings at 107 for both those days. Sunday at 104, a little bit cooler as we usher in September, September 1st on Tuesday. Dave and Paula, back to you guys. All right, thanks, Darren. And Chris Matthews here with sports. Talking baseball right now. Yeah, the Rockies uh, making history right now. The Dodgers feeling the pain. Los Angeles visiting the Mile High City. But who gets to celebrate? Another nail biter there. Plus, could UNLV's schedule be a stumbling block or stepping stone? More next here on Channel 8. You're watching Channel 8, home of Super Bowl 44. Now, Channel 8 Eyewitness Sports with Chris Matthews. Colorado Rockies involved in a 14 inner thrilling last night. Colorado hosting the Dodgers, another nail biter tonight. Rocky fans got to be loving this. Their team has been red hot since the All Star break. Dodgers playing catch up ninth. Manny Ramirez slices this two out shot to right. That plates a game tying run. Dodgers had their chances. This routine pop, or is anything routine here? Manny Ramirez. Gets all the way from first to third right there, but L.A. fails to score. This one goes into extra innings, and in the tenth, Troy Tulowitzki. He's at the plate, and he is the hero of the game. Bases loaded, bloop that drops down. Rockies were trading the Dodgers by 15 and a half games on June 3rd. Now it's a two-game lead as the Rockies win their second straight extra inning game, 5-4, your final. Former UNLV golfer Ryan Moore has got to be feeling pretty good as he prepares for the Barclays tourney in Jersey City. He's coming off that impressive weekend win hungry for more momentum going into this week but you know as of right now I'm trying to leave that behind me leave the excitement and uh, and kind of regroup and, and get ready for this week field gets a little bit tougher though this week Tiger Woods Phil Mickelson among others in the Barclays college football fans got to be a little intrigued about UNLB's upcoming season the national prognosticators are picking the Rebels to be a sleeper team this year. They certainly have what it takes to get to the postseason a bowl game their schedule could either be a stumbling block or stepping stone uh, we also we have a very challenging schedule, and uh, I think we play eight bowl teams, eight teams that were in bowls last year. Uh, so, so we got a great, great schedule, challenging schedule. Uh, I'm very excited about this season. All right, for the first time in 20 years, UNLV opens with three straight home dates. Let's check the schedule. Kicks off in 11 days now. UNLV opens against Sacramento State, then Oregon State, who's picked to finish in the top half of the Pac-10. They visit Sam Boyd. Then Hawaii at home on the 19th. UNLV closes the month at Wyoming. Then it's off to Reno, picked in the top half of the WAC. Then home with two preseason top 25 teams, BYU-Utah. Then back on the road, New Mexico. Then off to nationally ranked TCU. UNLV rolls into November with a home date against Colorado State. Then off to Air Force, and they close out the season at home with San Diego State on November 28. Well, if you're wondering about Michael Vick, the Eagles will throw him out of the nest this Thursday in their preseason game. Michael will have an opportunity to play uh, tomorrow, or again Thursday. I, I can only go off of what I've seen in practice, and it looks like he's moving around pretty good. But again, it, it has been. I mean, realistically, it's been it's been two years. I'm really just going to take it play by play to see how see how I adjust to the game speed if. Uh, if I think that's a that's a problem, he, <clears throat> I'd probably discontinue the reps. If I feel like he's he's adjusting okay, then uh, I'd continue to give him an opportunity here and there. We'll see what happens. His first game is since 2006. Oh yeah, yeah. Thanks, Chris. Be right back. Wake up the way Las Vegas starts today. Because waking up is a lot more fun with friends. Every day on Eyewitness News this morning or on your time.
whenever, however, wherever you need it. On Channel 8, you can always get your neighborhood weather at the usual times. But if you can't wait, you can get live, accurate conditions where you live online at lasvegasnow.com. On the move, we're on your mobile, updated in real time. We want you to have your forecast no matter how. No matter when. No matter where you are. Your forecast, your channel, your time. Your neighborhood weather team. Neighborhood weather, brought to you by Haynes and Krieger. Wake up the way Las Vegas starts the day. Because waking up is a lot more fun with friends. Every day on Eyewitness News this morning. That's all for us live at 11. As we told you earlier, Senator Edward Kennedy passed away this evening. The Senator Reid issued a statement late tonight. That's right. Senator Reid said, The liberal lion's mighty roar may now fall silent, but his dream shall never die. We'll see you tomorrow night.